Hello everyone, this is Satyajit Das and in this video I'm going to explain what is a circuit breaker, the mechanism or the logic behind a circuit breaker and how to implement it in Go. So circuit breaker, its concept comes from electrical circuits. So it's basically a switch which protects an electrical circuit from damage that is caused by either excessive current or any short circuiting. So from a programming point of view, it is useful especially when one service calls another service so let's say I have service A and service B and service A regularly calls service B to get some data out of it and let's say sometimes what can happen is service B is down so it's either short of resources or it's having a bug or it's having a fatal failure or it's simply restarting it could be any reason and during these times we know for sure that uh, service B will not be able to return anything. So during these times, it will be helpful if we have an automated mechanism in place which will stop service A from calling service B. Okay, so this is where circuit breaker comes into picture. So this acts as an automated mechanism to take care of these situations. So now I'm going to explain the logic behind how a circuit breaker actually performs so before that there are a couple of terminologies of circuit breaker so when i say it is open that means it looks like what you are seeing now so there is no connection between a and b which means a cannot call b and when i say it is closed that means these two are connected which means service a can call service b okay and there is something in between which is half open and I will get back to it later what exactly it means. First, I will explain what sort of logic goes into the circuit breaker. So as I said before, there is this state called closed where uh, nothing wrong is happening and all the calls from A to B is successful. Okay, so then you define a failure threshold. What it means is that uh, if let's say service B fails only one out of a million times, this is probably fine for you. But if it fails, you know, 50% of the time, then it is not fine. So you define a failure threshold. And as long as the failure is under the failure threshold, then the circuit breaker is closed, which means service A can contact to service B. So what happens if the failure threshold is reached? That's when it enters this open state okay so open state means service a cannot contact service b and that therefore service b is sort of protected or the overall the overall system is protected there is no unnecessary calls going around especially if we know these calls are going to fail for sure so during this open state what happens is you wait for some time ideally to give service b enough time to recover for whatever problem it was having so there is a time called timeout so you set this timeout beforehand and only after this timeout it will go to half open state so what happens in this case is that it will do like a test call so service a will call service b once more and two things can happen it can either fail again in that case it will go back to its open state or it will be successful and then it will go to closed state okay so then service a will get back to normal and you know keep on calling service b as many times as it wants so this is basically the overall logic and this is generally how a circuit breaker works in programming and there are two key settings here you saw so first one is the failure threshold so this you have to set beforehand like okay maybe you are okay with one percent failure rate but you are not okay if the failure rate is like 10 percent things like that and there is another setting that is timeout so how long you are going to wait in the open state before trying out again okay so let's say service b is restarting and usually restarting takes five minutes so you have to set the timeout accordingly but if it immediately restarts like if it restarts within a second then you probably will set timeout of one second so now that the logic is clear i'm going to show how exactly it is 
implemented in Go using a particular package. Okay, so here I have my server, which is basically equivalent to the service B. So this is basically just a simple HTTP server, as you can see, and this is listening on port 8080. So what this does is just gives a response called hello. So if I run it, then the service is now running. And now if I go to localhost 8090, I see hello as the response. Okay. So this is basically equivalent of service B. So now I'm going to explain how service A or the client side is usually set up with regards to a circuit breaker. So I'm going to use this package called go breaker here. And in this code, basically what this does is calls this get function. And that get function, what it does is simply do a HTTP call to whatever URL you are set. Okay, that's what it does by default. And now I will show how, uh, what are the steps that are required to include a circuit breaker into this call. Okay, so first thing is, first you have to initialize a circuit breaker struct. Okay, which is basically a struct of this go breaker package. And during this initialization initialization phase, you can set your settings. Okay, so there are various sort of settings. As you can see here, you can set names or max request, interval, timeout, ready to trip, which is a function, and on state change, which is also a function. So in this case, I'm going to show you uh, three of these settings. So the name is self-explanatory. Whatever name you give, the ready to trip is basically this act as a function using which you will decide when to get into an open state okay so in this case this function has access to the number of counts or the number of requests so i'm defining a failure ratio here so if the total number of failures divided by total number of requests is uh, more than 60% and the total number of requests is already more than 10 that's when i decide okay this is enough of a failure and i'm going to open the circuit okay you can of course set based on whatever is your criteria and next is timeout as i explained before so this is the amount of time it will wait in the open state before trying an extra call again so this i have set to be one millisecond and then there is this another function which you can set in the settings called on state change so whenever a state changes from any of these uh, open closed or, or half open okay so this is a function which takes from and to as argument so each of them are these states so and i'm simply logging certain messages so if uh, we are going to an open state i'm logging okay state is open if we are going from open to half open i'm just logging or if you're going from half open to closed i'm also logging just to keep track of what's happening so these are the settings so the first step as i said you define this uh, circuit breaker struct and second step is to add your settings and i'm doing it in an init function so that it gets called initially when the program gets executed and then the third thing is to actually wrap your calls which is basically this http get calls inside this uh, circuit breaker dot execute function okay this line which ends here basically so you are wrapping your call and whatever you do after the call so here i'm doing okay i'm getting the response and simply uh, returning the body of the response so I'm wrapping this inside this so that the circuit breaker knows what to do based on the responses it gets. So these three are the steps basically you need to take to implement circuit breaker and to simulate errors in the server. What I'm doing is I have a for loop here in the main function where initially I'm calling this incorrect URL. So as you see here, it's listening on 8090. Initially, I'm just simply using 8091, which is incorrect. So it will obviously give error. And then after 15 attempts, I'm going to give the correct URL, which simulates that, okay, after 15 attempts, the, serv the service is back up. 
so it will give positive responses okay so what i expect here is that after 10 calls so initially all the calls will be having errors right because this port doesn't exist so after first 10 attempts because i've set before that the total number of requests have to be at least 10 and the failure ratio have to be more than 0 0.6 in this case all of them will be failure so after first 10 attempts the circuit breaker will be open and then it will keep on trying after every millisecond because i have set the timeout to be one millisecond okay and i'm also doing a time dot slip so that the timeout actually gets reached so from so the first 10 calls will be failure after that it will be open and then from 10 to 15 after each millisecond it will check if the service is back up or not and it will fail and only after the 15th attempt then it will have the correct url so that means it can go back to the closed state so let's run this program okay so now let's see the logs so as you can see initially it is giving error as it's logging the error and it will log the error for initially for 10 times and then you can see the state is open because it has reached our failure criteria right and then after every millisecond it will try again which we know from this message going from open to half open right so it is trying again and then again it failed then it tried again then it again it failed so it is always remaining in open state okay and after few more attempts then you can see it is actually successful because it says you are going from open to half open then going from half open to closed okay so when it reached the closed state then it's actually getting some response and then because i'm simply writing the responses you are seeing this hello messages okay so this is how you implement circuit breaker logic in any program really and i will put a link to the code base in the description and feel free to comment if anything was unclear and if you like the video give it a like and subscribe thanks